We're analyzing Lowe's stock ticker LOW to see if this dividend king is on sale. This analysis is around 10 minutes. It's going to be intense, but it's going to be worth it. We're using the select six analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for Lowe's. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Lowe's for your stock portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Lowe's stock performance. Right now, Lowe's trades for $217.59 per share. Year to date, their stock price is up 9%. They're just slightly underperforming the S&P 500, which is up 15% year to date. In the last five years, Lowe's outperforms the index. They're compounding at 15% annually here in orange. In the last 10 years, Lowe's is compounding at 17% annually. Going back before the global financial crisis, in the last 18 and a half years, Lowe's stock is compounding at 11 and a half percent annually. They've outperformed the S&P 500 in the last two decades, with major outperformance coming since 2020. Right now, Lowe's pays a 1.94% dividend yield. They've grown their dividends for more than 50 years. That's a track record putting them up there with other companies like Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, and Coca-Cola. Right now, Lowe's trades $20 below their 52-week high. The company's up nearly $50 from their 52-week. The company's up more than $40 from their 52-week low. Lowe's has around 2% of its shares sold short, so there is a little bit of short interest in the business. Lowe's is a big company. They have a $128.5 billion market cap, one of the largest retailers in the world. But the burning question is, how has Lowe's managed to outperform for so long? Lowe's is the second largest home improvement retailer in the world, operating more than 1,700 stores in the United States. After the 2023 divestiture of its Canada locations, Rona, Lowe's Canada, Reno Depot, and Dick's Lumber, the firm's stores offer products and services for home decorating, maintenance, repair, and remodeling, with maintenance and repair accounting for two-thirds of products sold. Lowe's targets retail do-it-yourself, around 75% of sales, and do it for me customers, as well as commercial and professional business clients, which are around 25% of sales. Lowe's is estimated to capture a low double digit share of the domestic home improvement market based on US Census data and management's estimate for market size. Now let's get in the numbers. Metric number one, we want Lowe's average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. The average business earns 7% returns on capital. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock's likely to return what its underlying business returns. Looking for returns that are twice as good as average can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the business. Over the last five years, Lowe's return on capital has more than doubled. They improved every year since 2020, earning higher than 50% returns in their last fiscal year. When these are averaged out, Lowe's earns 37% returns in a given year. That's five times better than an average business. This is a huge check on metric number one. Metric number two, we want to see five-year revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. This metric's all or nothing. These all need to be up for it to be a check. We'll include their numbers from their last 12 months. These won't show up on this chart, but they will impact our calculations. In this time, Lowe's revenues are up 84%. Their net incomes or their earnings have tripled, with their operating margins nearly doubling over this time. They've kept their gross margins steady. Lowe's has also grown their free cash flows by 17%. Free cash flows can be a little lumpy year to year, which is why we'll take an average when we estimate a fair value for Lowe's later in our analysis. So you'll want to watch till the end. All three are up, which is what we're looking for. This is a check on metric number two. Metric number three is where Lowe's really shines. The company's earnings have tripled over this time. We'll consider that as we look for their earnings per share to have grown in their last five years. In this time, Lowe's has not only tripled their earnings, they've also bought back 24% of their shares outstanding. These are absolutely huge buybacks. Lowe's has repurchased a fourth of their company, increasing the ownership for existing shareholders without them having to spend a dime. Ultimately, it depends what valuations these buybacks were occurring at as to whether it created or destroyed values for long-term shareholders in Lowe's. Given the company's track record, their high returns, and their impressive growth, it's likely this creates value for long-term shareholders. You'd want to dig into the company farther to be sure. Either way though, this is a massive check on metric number three. Their earnings per share have nearly quadrupled over this time. Metric number four, we want to see a similar story with their free cash flows per share. 
we're looking for these to have grown in their last five years. That's also the case as Lowe's has grown their free cash flows by 17% and they have these big 24% share buybacks. This is a check on metric number four. Lowe's is perfect through four metrics. Let's see if they can keep this going. But there's still one vital piece missing. You might think nailing returns on capital and having good growth is the key, but we haven't touched on the one thing that I believe sets truly wonderful businesses apart, which is having these without using a lot of debt. Metric number five, we want Lowe's net debt to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. In this time, Lowe's has grown their net debt. They've more than doubled their position. Today, they have around $37 billion in net debt. When we add up their free cash flows in the last five years, Lowe's has generated $32 billion of free cash flow. While that's a lot, that's not quite enough to cover their full debt load, meaning this is our first X of the day on metric number five. Keep some key points in mind. While the company's capital leases may be included in this, that's not enough to make up for the difference for Lowe's. What it really comes down to is Lowe's has nearly tripled their long-term debt position. You'd want to dig into the company's filings to understand how this debt is structured, what rates it's at, when does it mature, and are there covenants associated with the debt that could have this cause headaches for the business. Not saying that's the case one way or the other, it's just something to dig in and learn more about. As our bonus, we want Lowe's dividend to be supported by their free cash flows. As we talked about, Lowe's is a dividend king that right now pays a 1.94% dividend yield. With them growing their dividend for each of the last 50 years, it's no surprise they've grown their dividend per share in each of the last five years as well. In this time, Lowe's has supported their dividends using their free cash flows. Today, they have a lower dividend payout ratio than they did in their fiscal 2019. Lowe's supports their dividends today and in each of the last five fiscal years. This is what we're looking for. This is a check on our bonus. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Lowe's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating a fair value for Lowe's. Right now, Lowe's has a nearly $166 billion enterprise value. This accounts for both the company's market cap and their net debt position. It's looking at Lowe's similar to it being a private company. In the last five years, we learned Lowe's generated $6 billion of free cash flow, meaning they produce about $6.4 billion of free cash flow in an average year. When that's divided by their $166 billion enterprise value, we get a 3.9% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. That's about in line with the yield of the 10-year treasury, but it's below the risk premium we're looking for. On a current basis, Lowe's produced $5.8 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their $166 billion enterprise value, we get around a 3.5% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. That's down from where they were at historically. Keep in mind the last five years include a very big boom time for Lowe's and other home improvement stores across the country as they benefited a lot from increased consumer spending from 2020 onwards. Both of these yields come in below the risk premium we're looking for, meaning this is an X on metric number six. Don't just throw the business out. We still need to estimate their fair value per share. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Lowe's, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate Lowe's fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. Lowe's has been a very predictable business in its past. That informs these assumptions, but it's no guarantee for the future. Assuming Lowe's grows their current free cash flows by 10% annually for the next decade, then in the following decade, assuming that this growth is cut in half and they grow at 5% annually, we're not adding in their tangible book value because that's skewed based on how the accounting is done for Lowe's big share buybacks. That's something you can dig into the company and perhaps re-add to this analysis, so it's a factor to keep in mind. If we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, from today's valuation multiples, if these are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of Lowe's fair value per share is around $114. That's down over $100 from their current stock price. Keep some key points in mind. This 15% discount rate is an estimate of total returns to shareholders based on their free cash flows. It includes both Lowe's average dividend yield and any gains in their stock price. This is looking for Lowe's stock to outperform how they have in nearly the last two decades even as they beat the S&P 500. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. 
consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our final rating to Lowe's, but we need to address something first. Why don't we find out what the qualitative factors are for Lowe's business? They might be even more important than the numbers. Looking at the factors supporting a long thesis, number one, Lowe's could reach mid-teen operating margins in the near future after divesting the dilutive Canada business and investing in productivity efforts. Number two, perpetual productivity initiatives, which could improve the supply chain and inventory management, could boost inventory turnover and working capital generation above levels that are currently anticipated. Number three, higher home prices and aging housing stock support demand, generating an estimated cumulative free cash flow to the firm of $39 billion over the next five years, which could help refinance management's projection of up to $21 billion in share repurchases. It wouldn't be fair if we didn't cover the negatives of Lowe's business as well. Looking at the factors supporting a short thesis, Number one, the closure of smaller peers may intermittently lead to competitive pricing pressure at lows, constraining return on capital expansion and limiting sales growth. Number two, higher interest rates, flat housing price growth, or tighter lending standards could slow inventory turnover, postponing home improvement projects and hindering low sales. Number three, lower sales could pressure profitability if lower margin acquired businesses like those that compose the Lowe's Pro supply line, operate less than optimally. Farther margin pressure could ensue if growing Pro and MRO demand become difficult. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of Lowe's qualitative factors. Now it's time for our rating. In analyzing Lowe's stock ticker LOW, we learned this dividend king has outperformed the S&P 500 in the last two decades. They've earned very high returns on capital that have grown a lot since 2020. Their business has also grown. They've repurchased a whopping 24% of shares, making them one of the top share cannibals in the entire market. This is an anomaly, especially for a business with a track record like Lowe's and their storied dividend history. While Lowe's has added on more long-term debt recently than what their free cash flows look like they support, this may or may not be a potential issue for the business. It ultimately depends on a handful of factors, including what Lowe's uses the debt for. Especially with share buybacks, this could be increasing value for long-term shareholders. Learning about how this debt is structured will really be the key for Lowe's. Again, this analysis isn't financial advice. Lowe's has grown their dividends for more than 50 years. They've grown them and supported them using their free cash flows in their last five years. Their free cash flow to enterprise value yields were around the yield of the 10-year treasury, but they didn't look attractive compared to the risk premium we're looking for. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis of lows, from today's valuation multiples, if these are the same 20 years into the future, using those assumptions if you want a 15% rate of return, an estimate of their fair value per share is around $114. The company was last at those levels in May of 2020. Since then, their stock performance has been even better than those results. Looking at all the factors of our analysis, Lowe's looks like a moderate candidate for further research. Dig into the business if you're interested. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, share your thoughts about Lowe's, and let me know what business to look at next in the comments below. Thanks for learning about Lowe's with me, and have a great day.